three. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is Bob from Chicago Archery, and I have Katie with me today. Welcome back to Chicago Archery to the Point. Um, as you can see, that I my skills with the computer have not gotten any better. So <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have an interesting thing here. Um, let's put this up right away here. Uh, okay. For all of you that don't know, uh, it's Chicago Archery to the point, C A T O P O I N T at gmail.com. That's Chicago Archery to the point, C A to the point at gmail.com. If you have any kind comments, any bullshit comments, keep to yourself. Um, but if you have some, uh, you know, constructive criticism, I'll take it with a grain of salt. Okay. <laughs> As we all know, I'm running this show and uh, criticism is something that I don't care for. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, having a lot of fun as usual. So, as so, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, you can go to Chicago Archery to the point at gmail.com. If you feel you should be on this podcast, feel free to contact me. And if I feel you're worthy, and funny, you will be more than welcome to come on the show. And I'm always looking for people to come on the show. All right. Uh, the other thing. Oh, thanks again for Wings of Severance for the beginning. Awesome. As usual, those guys rock. I'm going to stop the share here and get us back. Okay. If you don't know, it's Chicago Archeries to the Point on uh, YouTube. That's our channel. And uh, you can see us there live. Well, not live recorded in person at the same time as we do the podcast. So you'll see that as you can see today, we got some stuff on the table. For those of you can't see, we got stuff on the table. Uh, we're going to be talking about a bunch of things, but Katie here, Katie, um, Katie is one of the people that come. She's a friend of mine that comes to our shop. As everybody knows, your friends and family, when you come to this shop, Katie, I'm going to give you a little background of what's going on and before she starts talking because she's a woman and uh, usually when you get a woman start talking, they can't shut up. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> she's also a lawyer, uh, which means that I got to watch what I'm saying because um, I probably will screw that up and uh, she'll sue me or something, <laughs> put me in jail. Probably doesn't help. We like to hear ourselves talk too, right? Yes, you're exactly right. <laughs> Lawyers love to hear themselves talk because, <laughs> and, and you can always ask them. They're always fucking right. <laughs> Even when they're not. So, all right. So we're going to have a good time. So Katie is a new archer. Katie is newer to hunting. Last year, she went out um, with her boyfriend, Rick, and uh, got a, her first deer with a rifle yes. up in Wisconsin. Uh, they have some land up there and that they're able to use. And she came to me and, and got a bow because she got the bug and she wanted to try it with archery and then fell in love with archery. And then we'll go on from there. Um, we're also going to be trying some food. So some we're going to be doing some of the dehydrated mountain house because um, that's a, the brand that I like to eat. Um, but we're going to talk about a little bit of that and we're going to get some real time. Katie's never had it. So that's what I want to do. I want you guys to get some real time look at, see how some of this tastes. We have some hand electric hand warmers here today. And, um, another little thing that I have is, uh, uh, a flask that we'll talk about. All right. So let's start it off. All right. Um, Katie, how did you get started in, in the archery? I mean, what really you did, did you, did it just say, Hey, I want to try this with a bow now to extend your season? Or did you, did you actually feel like it would be cool? I mean, give me a little idea of what you're doing. Yeah. Well, first, thanks for having me, Bob. I'm really excited to be here. Um, wow. wow that, you know, that was unscripted by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I would say how I really started, I was, you know, we came here to your shop to support you. Um, and we came with a group to shoot archery. Mm. Uh, we started with the recurves. I forgot about that. Yep. And at that point I, I loved it. And so we came back, we had a few lessons with Jess. And at that point, um, I decided that this is something that I really wanted to do. Um, I wanted to start getting into league and shooting 3d. And this was kind of prior, prior to my hunting season. Right. Um, so it gave you like a goal to work towards because yes. you can't just walk into league. You gotta. Right. So that's something that I always wanted to be a part of and I wanted to work towards that. Um, and then, you know, we came back, I, I talked to you right. and you broke down the pros and cons of each bow. And I told you kind of what my goal was. And ultimately I wanted to get into hunting with a bow. Um, I felt like that was a very prestigious, uh, thing in the hunting world to do. Without a doubt, it's and so We're that like was kings and queens <laughs> and I'm an overachiever. So I wanted to, that was something I really wanted to work towards. Um, so I, you know, you, I, I let you know kind of what my intentions were with this bow. You broke down the pros and cons. Ultimately we decided together that the convergence would be the best fit for me. It was uh, something I could grow the into. Convergence, the bow tech convergence. Correct. And I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit and stop you for there for a second. So what it was, was she was a newer shooter. And in my process on that end of it, what she was talking about is I wanted her something she could grow into, not grow out of. I could have sold her any bow on the rack that, you know, at the right poundage, but I wanted her something she could go up to. Plus you were having a back issue. Correct. That, right. When you bought the bow, a back issue came into play. So we were able to turn it down. And then you can work back up into the poundage where you want it. Yes. Right. And uh, that's something else we're going to get into tonight. I forgot all about that. Yeah. We're going to talk about your bow poundage and uh, a little bit of kinetic energy. Okay. Okay. So go on. So, you know, once uh, we decided that I decided I'm going to set up lessons with Jess and I wanted to really work on just getting my basic mechanics down and learning what I needed to do, how to really work with my bow well. Um, and then after those lessons, I decided this is something I really wanted to go and, and, and learn how to hunt with. So um, I continued taking those lessons and continued working. I, I had to build up, as you said, I had an injury. Yeah. So I had to build that up, um, which took a lot of time and a lot of patience because, you know, I, I really wanted to just get out there and start, you know, getting to that poundage that I needed to be at in order to hunt, but it took some time. Um, you know, my, my injury had me out for like five weeks. So it was something pretty significant. Right. Um, but my bow, it was amazing. Cause it, it <laughs> got me to that point. Um, where if, I worked, if you can't see on the YouTube, you got to see Katie's face when she talks about her bow. <laughs> it's like it, it, she has an emotional connection to this bow. Oh my gosh. I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. This, this bow is going to stay with me forever. Um, yeah. it's my first bow and it's, it's not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> but so, yeah, so I mean, you know, I started those lessons with Jess and I, I kept working up towards it. And then Jess, um, introduced me to, and, and explain the difference with stabilizers. Um, and so then she introduced me to that. So I, I, you know, I got a new stabilizer, which helped tremendously for me. Right. Um, so that's one of the things that we do. Um, and, and a little feather in a hat here. Um, we don't just sell you everything, right? We got you going on it. And then we wanted you to earn, to understand and what we call earn your equipment, earn a better site, yep. earn a stabilizer. We could sell you a stabilizer. We think you're good, but when you get to know what you're doing, you're like, oh, I kind of like this one. So you ended up picking out your own stabilizer after trying a few, right? Yeah. And, and it makes a difference. Absolutely. 100% makes a difference. I mean, it's easy to get that quick, easy sale and get them out the door. But when you're friends and family, you want to take care of them. So what you want to do is so everybody comes in, buys a bow, is friends and family with us. I slowly get them to understand their bow. Now, if they're an experienced shooter, we do that. So you must have mentioned it a million times you were practicing and you were getting up to what we're going to talk about in a little bit here is what you, some of the people out here are going to be listening to this are newer like yourself 
and female. That's why, you know, you're, well, I can have newer, sh- I've had newer shooters on here, but they're, they want that goal too. And what is that goal? The goal was what we put a goal on you at least 40 pounds, right? Yes. At least 40 pounds at your draw length of 27, 27 inches. Right. So and we're going to get into your bow a little bit and some of the kinetic energy and how it measures up and w- what was the end result we'll tell later. Okay. So, um, yeah, so you were with Jess and you had the practices and going on and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, what, you know, I mean, everybody, you know, shoots at a circle, right. All All the time they shoot at a circle and it's like, it gets boring for people and they want to do other things. Only you mentioned the 3d. So you had that goal of coming to the league where we shoot, um, at this time of the year, we shoot a, like a Vegas target, you know, Vegas target shooting. And then we break off and we do 10 to 12 3d targets. Yeah. So, and it's at right in the middle of the week to get people warmed up for going out that weekend because it builds confidence Yeah. and bond, confidence brings consistency and consistency brings accuracy. If you're not following that confidence brings consistency, consistency brings accuracy. It is the nature of archery. All right. And we try to have fun. So that's where the league, like you were, you yeah. were, I mean, obviously you're driven and everything, but I, come on, you got to admit, we do some pretty fun things. Oh, right? it's a blast. I absolutely love it. Um, and the 3d portion of it is my favorite. <laughs> um, I, I really tend to excel at that most. <laughs> um, but that helped me it really helped prepare me for hunting too, because, you know, we're the way we set up the different targets, um, you know, whether we put it behind a tree or, you know, it's just, it's all about, as you said, consistency. And it really helped me with muscle memory you yeah, know? yeah, muscle and memory. teaching me that muscle memory where when you're, when you're out there and you're hunting, you know, you you have sensory overload and, what it really comes down to is that muscle memory, you know, and you don't have to think about those basics, um, which is huge. And it's, it's extremely helpful, um, in that aspect, but, uh, 3d is my favorite to do. So, um, it's tough. We we make it tough. It's tough. We make it real tough. And honestly, the, everybody we come, you know, that comes to league, we're a family. So, we all help motivate each other, you know, but we, it's, it's friendly, fun competition. Right. So you a lot know, of it, ribbon, a lot of ribbon. And then yes. people talking to each other when you're trying to concentrate, which, oh, yeah, which is, is, is helpful. And honestly, that was some of my best times I was shooting. So right. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 so I have a saying, you say, if, if, if you just enjoy archery, the good will come. Yeah. Okay. So basically what I, I always, you always see me walking around range going, are you having fun? You having fun? Mm -hmm. You having fun? That's like my, it's like the key to me of archery. When you see somebody having fun, it's like they can't miss. Yeah. They're having that, you know, ground or, you know, that Caddyshack moment, you know, or you're in the rain and you just can't miss because you're having fun. It's like, it's the whole thing going through. And, and I really, I, I always say I got to have fun. So I, like when I get up, my daughter, Jess, will tell you, it, we get up at four in the morning. I have this routine in the trailer, where I'm, you know, I'm cooking some food or some breakfast. Like we're going to have some stuff here pretty soon. Pretty soon. Right. Okay. Hey, can you bring me the, the leather or excuse me, the, the, the yellow piece of paper off my bench, please. That I got pen written, pen pen written stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too much already, I think. <laughs> That's never enough. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's yeah, just a piece of a legal paper. Anyway, so all of you that are in the podcast are like, "What the hell is he doing right now?" I forgot a piece of paper on my bench. It has some numbers on it. And we're going to talk about doing some of that stuff. So, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, you know, Bob, if I can just add part of what I absolutely love and what I love about just being in the league too, is I feel there's this huge misconception that archery is a male sport and, you know, there's other, there's some other females 
there are predominantly male, but there are other females and we all support each other a hundred percent. And I well, love There's three it. of you in my league alone out of 12 there's people, three. there's three and one's a recurve. Yeah. And she shoots with her dog too. Oh, amazing. I mean, mm-hmm. so it, it's great to be part of that, you know, and then just to um, realize that they, it's not just a male sport. I mean, it, it can be anybody's sport. And well, I'm going to clue you in on something. Okay. I learned archery from my mom. She taught Girl Scouts and Girl Scouts weren't allowed to do that stuff. And my mom was like, fuck you. I'm doing that. Yeah. By the way, if you have children, don't listen to this. <laughs> so um, it'll be a rating in there. And if you're on the YouTube channel, subscribe. I keep forgetting to throw that in there. Rick never lets me say, hey, you forgot to tell everybody to subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. There's a button down below. Down. All right. Uh, so. If you look it up, the most accomplished Olympic archers of all time, um, you'll get five names, and four of them are female. So my mom taught me archery, and I w- had four sisters, um, actually two sisters, two incredibly demonized bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they don't listen. <laughs> they won't. They're evil. Um, and, uh, then I raised two daughters, which is, you know, are cracker jack shots. And you keep mentioning Jess, who yeah. is just an incredible archer in herself. So, uh, females are a big part of archery and they take to it like a fish to water. And I just give them a place to go. I make it archery female friendly. Yep. You know, by having the female instructors and stuff like that. And they are all good archers and they earn the respect of the male archers. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's and you're, you're hitting it. So the misconception is, is the other males make people feel that it's a male sport. And when you watch it on TV, you know, they're always doing the stuff for the females and stuff like that, but it's not that way. As you prove. Yeah. As you prove it. It's not. It's not by no means. And you guys are as aggressive and as good as or better than any of the men. I brought in little Emily that one time at 15 years old and was going right up against all the men. Oh, yeah. In the league with a reeker. Yeah. You know, and as you, and as we, as I say, if you pick recurve or um, uh, compound bow, or, you know, traditional in when you compete, I don't segregate. So I don't segregate men from women and I don't segregate traditional from compound. If you, that's the, what you choose. You got to compete against people. You know, if a 10 is a 10 is a 10 is a 10 period. Right. So if that's a, what you choose, if you got to work harder to get that 10, so be it. That's what you chose. And some people choose that. And mm-hmm. that's what we do. So you, you, you hit it right on the spot that it's, it's a misconception and we have the Eva shocky bows and as you know, and we, we do make sure that there's enough here for the female. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I never felt unwelcome oh, ever. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the best. And we're not trying to promote the shop as much. You know, this is not about just promoting my shop. It is about letting people know that there's more out there. It's, yeah. it's huge. And I had 60% of my, or better of my um, customers here are female. Yeah. So, okay. So let's get back to this. I think so our food is ready. Our, we have some food coming mm-hmm. in. Okay. We have, what do we have? Oh, we have the chicken casserole. All right. Home style chicken casserole. Yes. We, do you have one of each for each of us? Okay. All right. Okay. Ooh. Which one are we trying first? Yeah, whichever one you want to try. Okay. I'm trying the chicken casserole. Okay. We're going to get off the bows and stuff for a minute. We're going to go to the food. So we're talking about mountain house dehydrated food. We just rehydrated it. We have home style chicken casserole. We have pepper steak, Italian pepper steak, and we have raspberry with cookie crumble. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to try a little bit of it. You can look at the YouTube and we're going to get some, see it. It wasn't that watery. See, it wasn't, which one are you tried? You're I'm going to try the chicken casserole. Go for it. And I've had the chicken casserole, but I've never had this Italian steak and I'm dying to try it. 
Holy shit. Oh my God, this is good. I can't believe this came out of that. This is amazing. Right. So when you first open it and you pour the water in, you follow the directions. And this is what I eat when I'm out in the field. Why set up all this cooking and bring in all these coolers of food and stuff like that? I do bring some sandwich meat because I like a sandwich every one of them. But this is what I eat for weeks on end. This so is really good. Now I'm eating the peppers, Italian pepper steak with rice and tomatoes, and it's incredible. It is incredible. Now I did it, I did get it a little bit too watery, but it's 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 incredible. The chicken casserole is not watery. No. Mm-mm. I got that. I cook that a, a lot. Like I buy that by the case and it's got mushrooms and noodles and celery and chicken pieces. Not like a little bit of chicken pieces. There's a lot, like a lot more than when you get. All right. We're back. Um, if you notice a bump, uh, things went haywire. My internet went down and fucked the whole thing up. So <laughs> we were trying uh, some of the food from Mountain House here that we hydrate. I want you guys Katie's been over here eating it. During the- <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> if you haven't tried doing dehydrated food, you should try. Uh, I recommend the Mountain House. I rarely do product stuff, but this happens to be good. And and d- how about the the pepper steak? The pepper steak is really good. And it's like it tastes like it just you know like it's regular. It wasn't hydrated meat. You know what I mean? No, it's not like it was something that tastes hydrated. It's like something I just made, right? It- literally tastes like it was fresh Mm -hmm. i can't imagine i mean i I can't believe that this actually came from that bag it's like skirt steak it's chewy right Mm. and then we had the home style chicken and noodle which has mushrooms and chicken and you know little red peppers or something the pimento i don't know what the fuck that is i don't know but the chicken and noodle was my favorite Mm. but the the peppered steak was so tender and then my next favorite is the raspberry with cookie crumble. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I got it a little watery. I got to admit that it's more like raspberry soup with cookie crumble. Whatever. It still tastes good. Oh my God. Can you imagine this like in breakfast with some toast? Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Or like taking this, what I do is I take this and I make it like I'll make one package of this. And I'll make a bunch of packages of like oatmeal. And I put this on the oatmeal. Oh, that would be yummy. I feel like this, like we'd be eating like kings while hunting. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's like, so this food is like, you know, like fresh food, I guess, you know, freshly made and then dehydrated. I have so, to be honest. I was a little skeptical. Right. But it's amazing. Mm. So when you first look at it and you're in the package, you're like, I'm not going to live on this stuff. And then now you're like, full meals mm-hmm. and like some of these packages are for two or three people and it's if, if it says two or three people no you're gonna eat all of it because you're gonna love it especially if you're out in the cold and during deer season and stuff so if you hear us scraping and stuff if you're just <laughs> listening to the podcast that's us eating because we're not gonna stop eating during this whole thing we're gonna keep eating because it's good it is good and i'm freaking hungry <laughs> so we're drinking bourbon And eating Mm -hmm. raspberry with cookie crumbles and chicken and steak. I mean, we're like living big. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and then we had a computer problem, which is awesome because, you know, that shit happens to us. So, and we're doing pretty good for time, I think. All right. So I like to keep them within 45 to 60 minutes. This one's going to be closer to 60 minutes because we have a lot to go through too. Still. So. I'm going to have some more of this chicken. So Katie. Yes. Now let's get back to, let's go back to where and, and we can break in and we can be as ADD as we want to be. Um, if you want to break in without the food or equipment or something like that. So you, what you did was smart. You and Rick went out and you, you made this a, like a thing for the two of you. And um, what, you know, it was, it was really neat. Cause you both got into it. You both got bows you both went out. Right. And, and a lot of you guys don't, that are new to us and haven't listened to the first episodes, Rick's the guy that was in there in the first couple episodes with me. So 
he's like my audio tech. He was just here helping me <laughs> with this computer disaster we just had. Um, so say a little bit about what you guys did in the field, because that was smart. You guys got together and you did what? You sure. So we went out and we, we first scoped out the entire property, um, f- figured out, you know, we, we, we found there the trails, all the natural trails. Um, I picked out my own spot on where I wanted to be. Had to be. Yep. <laughs> and so we, you know, we ended up getting myself a, um, well, Rick likes to call it a condo, but you know, <laughs> it, it's an elevated stand. Um, we put it together ourselves. Um, we went out and we did field training. So I set up, you know, we set up the blind. Once I was finished, we put some of our decoys out there and uh, I, not the decoys there, the, the 3d targets, I'm sorry, the 3d targets. Right. And, um, you know, I, I ranged, uh, each tree. So I knew which tree was at, you know, 20 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards. Um, and at that point, I put the target practice deer out there and I practiced shooting for my stand. Um, I so made you know what you had to do, right? I knew exactly what I had to do. So prior practice and planning is a big part of being new to this. You kind of, cause you've never been in that situation before and you know, Hey, if I do this, I might bump this or I need to look at this. That that's important. Oh, and it was huge because, you know, when I first went to take that practice shot, I didn't realize there was a, you know, mine has these rifle rails, you know, and one was all the way up in the back. So when I had my, you know, I was full draw and my elbow was hitting that rack. So it was messing me up. Um, so I knew that as soon as I wanted to come in, when I'm bow hunting, that has to be all the way down. And so every time I came in and it obviously had to be up for me to get into the blind, but, um, as soon as I got in that went down and I knew you know, that's not going to be in my way. It's not going to be an issue. Um, I knew where I needed to stand. So my cams didn't hit anything. Um, it was, it, it made my first hunt that much easier for me. Um, well, you were calm. I was, and that's calm. a big part. There's a lot of shit going on at that time. And that's why I try to tell everybody, you know, if you practice, you know, piss poor practice brings piss poor performance. Everybody knows that one. But if you practice with a purpose, you're going to end up with good results. Right. You know and I mean? That's a big deal. And that's, you know, a lot of us that have been, you know, we just do it because I've been doing it for, you know, so many years. And I try to convey that off to people. They do this and hearing it from you is like, it's awesome. You know, to, to hear you did that. You, once I hear that you're doing all that, I'm like, yeah, well, this, we know this is, this is going to be successful mm-hmm. because you're learning it. Now there's another aspect too, like what I'm doing to my daughter, Jessica, is I made it really unbelievably hard for her. I didn't give her all the camouflage that she needs, not wearing wise, but like I cut all the trees around her. Yeah. So she's got to draw at the right time. So she's going to get, she's going to learn to draw because she's going to be hunting out West where there's not going to be all that kind of stuff. And, um, so I'm, I'm making it a little bit different, a little bit different. So she's practicing from there and she's had a rough go of it every time, but she's getting one step more, you know? So like you're saying, you were practice. Okay. So now for all you YouTubers that, um, all you YouTubers, uh, let's see if I can bring this up. Um, for all you YouTubers that are going to be watching this, okay, I'm going to share something on the screen and it's, it's Katie. All right. So Katie, tell us how you felt that day. Oh my gosh. I don't even know if, if. So first describe uh, what's on the screen. uh, Well, so that is my first buck and first deer ever bow hunting. Um, that was literally my first time out in the woods, bow hunting. Um, you know, we went out there and this was our first day. We were going to go for the entire weekend. We had just gotten there. You know, we're only going to do the afternoon hunt because we had, you know, just got in from work and, um, (laughs) we get out there. We still, I had already done my practice, you know, with the target shooting. 
but before you went out to the field, before I went out to the field, make sure your gear was going good. Correct. That's another big thing for everybody. Take note of that. When you were, when you're listening to our podcast, I expect everybody to have a notebook. Go ahead. And so, you know, I'd already done this. So I knew that I, there was one little area that I needed to just kind of cut a branch. So we went, um, Rick helped me out with that. And then I sat there and I was ready to hunt the rest of the afternoon while he went and set up his tree climber. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> we, uh, you know, before which he is left, a story all in itself, <laughs> it is, <laughs> you know, before he left, he said, don't you dare get a deer before I go ahead and set up my entire tree climber. Uh, 45 minutes later, I got my first buck. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, so it, it, it was, it was an amazing experience. Um, you know, when I saw that buck come in, my heart started racing, but <laughs> you know, I, I quickly, calm myself down and realized you got this. This is what you've been practicing for. This is what you've worked so hard for. Um, you know, I just went right back to my basics and then muscle memory took over and it was, you know, it was just kind of everything fell right into place as the way it, as it should have, you know, and, and that was all because I practiced. Um, yeah, practice, but, you know, brings like confidence, constant brings consistency. consistency oh, it was. Brings- yeah, and look, and I have to say where my deer ended up and where I ultimately, you know, released and, and shot him, he was in a position where I, we just so happened to have put the, um, target deer. And that's when, you know, I was like, I don't know if I have this shot, you know, there's some branches here. We didn't get rid of those. Um, cause I had practiced and I shot and I did just fine. Right. Had I not done that, I'm not even sure I would have taken the shot at that point. Right. Oh, that's um, awesome. That's awesome. So the, all you guys in the YouTube, you're seeing Katie with her. It, it, it's, it's not a record book buck, but, no, but it's he's pretty cool. You, it, it's cool. Looking. He's so it's cool. cool. Even the taxidermist called me and says, man, that's, that's cool. That's, yeah. That's he cool. was really cool. And I had watched him. So we set up some trail cams around there as well. And I saw him, you know, for a week prior to that day. Right. So it was pretty cool. And the trail cams are cool. So now that's a controversial thing that's going on right now is that they're talking about cellular cams, not being legal and stuff like that. So you shot your deer at what distance? About 30 yards. About 30 yards. Like yep. 28, 30 yards. It was about 28.6. Okay. <laughs> what pound did your bow are you pulling? And we pulled your bow on the, on the scale. I believe I was at 43 pounds. 43 pounds. Okay. So I've done some math with Katie here and, um, you can get these kinetic energy, um, calculators on, on the internet. So I'm not going to show you one of those. I'm not going to offer it. Um, you can put in your information. The information you're going to need is your length, of your arrow and, and the pound, you know, poundage of your bow and, and the speed of your bow and stuff like that. Now you can go to any archery shop. They have chronographs and scales and all that. And we can find your center um, for forward to center and stuff like that. So I did the calculations on Katie's stuff. And that was the paper that I was asking for earlier because I did the math earlier. All right. So Katie has a arrow that's 27 and three quarter inches long. She runs a 27 inch draw. All right. She's running 43 pounds, which is pushing that arrow at about 210 feet per second at six feet. So that's off the riser. Okay. So uh, I can give you all the information, blah, blah, blah. But she is actually running about a 14% forward of center. Okay. We put her in a thinner shaft, a little bit, a little bit heavier forward of center, because uh, her kinetic energy is just under 40. It's like 38.23, right? Now, comparing that to mine, which is right around 78, that's a big difference. But Katie, what did your arrow do? It went through and through. Right on, through and through. Because it was a good match. We didn't overweight her arrow. And she was shooting at a distance that we had figured this kinetic energy, you know, 30 yards or less is what we were doing first year. Right. And we were talking, I mean, we could do other things with her bow and, um, Oh, her arrow was 390.5 green or 300, 390.5 greens. That was with a hundred grain tip. Okay. So 
we were going to go with a 90 grain tip and we didn't because I wanted to do the 100 grain with her. Now, these are all calculations that your bow shop does. It is not anything that I burdened her with. We let her figure it out when it happened that she was like, wow, I can't believe that thing went through and through. And it was like, I expected it to. Okay. So another big thing you guys got to look into is momentum momentum of that arrow she has a bow that was shooting 43 now she's going to be going up in poundage um now that she's getting stronger and shooting every week now because we do some fun stuff every week yeah and the group of us and um but my daughter shoots like a 50 almost a 55 kinetic energy okay so and she's shooting about 58 pounds so ladies you don't have to pull a 60 pound bow. And I hear this a lot that they have to pull a 60 pound bow. Um, you don't have to do that. You 50 pound bows are nice and convenient. You, you're comfortable pulling your bow, right? That's what we made it. We yep. wanted you comfortable and you were able to hold it for the, the length that you wanted to hold it. So that's some of the information I want you guys to know. Um, she was running a 43 pound bow and went through and through. That's between you and your bow shop to get your bow to do that. Don't use, and I hear this a lot, don't use old arrows from boyfriends and husbands and whatever else that um, you get your bow set up for you Yep. and what it does, right? And it and, makes a huge difference. Absolutely. And you get in with the practice, you get so in that. So that was very important that we got that out there. Uh, hey, as a slick, as a side note here, we're going to do the ADD thing. Um, which one of the food things besides the raspberry? That's that's like, <laughs> oh, that's a given. <laughs> the d- dessert was awesome, right? Oh, my gosh. And you can do that with some crazy stuff, too. That's something I would enjoy just even outside of the hunting. So, you know, what's even cool on that, too, is when you use you have you put dehydrated uh, ice cream sandwich in there. Oh, that would be yummy. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. I am like a gourmet chef with this stuff. <laughs> I've been eating and Mountain House comes out with crazy stuff every year. <laughs> every year at four, at uh, April Fools, they always say they're coming out with their new uh, haggis. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite. And I try to order it. I'm like, yeah, I'd like the haggis. You're like, that's a that's an April Fool's joke. I'm like, no, I really want the haggis. I gotta have it. It's for my it's for my hunting camp. I gotta have it. Oh God. Yeah. So that was good. Okay. Were you going to ask me which one was my favorite besides though? Yeah. The raspberry, the chicken casserole. Yeah. That's, oh my God. That was so, so good. I don't want anybody to go out and order that now because I have to restock. <laughs> <laughs> I usually get, I'm going to be buying some. Yeah. I buy it by the case. I buy it by the case. So and there's a lot of stuff that you'll like about the different stuff. So let's talk about some of the gear. Okay. So you went out. It was kind of cold when you guys went out. Same with me and Jess. It was oh, yeah. kind of cold. And actually, Rick turned me on to these um, these hand warmers. They're electric hand warmers. They're like oval looking. They're Copas. C O O P A. Okay. Mm-hmm. Copas. You use them. I do. Yeah. Here, hold it. Oh yeah. That's really freaking hot, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And you they put have the in- three settings. Yeah, they have three settings. And if you turn it off, you can plug it in and charge your phone. Yes. Do you know that? Yeah. Okay. So these things are pretty neat. If, you, if you've if you been using those little packets that everybody uses and they throw in the fire that they don't burn. And these are awesome. They're reusable. And I've been playing with them since I got them because Rick told me about them and I just freaking love them. Oh, my gosh. I love these. So I, I What's the say- other thing that you really found useful in the field? The other thing I really found useful, um, well, for are you talking about just for warmth? Anything. What was um, another piece of gear? I'm hitting you on the spot here. For me, so I have really poor circulation. So it wasn't only those hand warmers, but I also had some toe um, boot warmers that I used. Those made the world of difference. What kind were they? I don't know. Were um, they were they the, like electric? They were electric. Yeah, oh, they have okay. little batteries. Okay. Um, it's it's an insole. I don't remember the the brand. That doesn't matter. But, they can go out and find um, it for themselves. It was amazing. I have such a problem with um, like I said, with my, with poor circulation. So, whenever you know we'd go out, it would 
kind of make it extra miserable when my hands and my feet or oh, my toes yeah. are cold. The there was nothing I could do about it. So, so I got, we got those hand warmers and I got the toe warmers and we also got these alpaca wool socks. And that's what I've been hearing about are amazing. I wear one pair of socks, which I was extremely skeptical about because I always wore multiple socks. Every time I went out, my feet are so warm. My hands are warm. I'm comfortable. It makes it a much, much better hunt. Okay. Now that is huge. So not only, you know, what people that say, oh, I got to get a bow and I can go bow hunting. What I tell them, they say, what, 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 what I need next? I said, well, camouflage. And then what after that? And you say, oh, a tree stand. And they say, what after that? I say, a knife. <laughs> right? Right. You got to have a knife. And then I use re replaceable blades, even though I have a kick-ass sharpener here. But I use the replaceable blade ones. You can use whatever you like. Just make sure if you don't use the replaceable blade ones that you bring a sharpener because you may drop it in the dirt and it dulls or cut a bone or something like that. So make sure you use what you got to use, but staying comfortable and warm. Now there's mobile warming. Um, I believe mobile warming makes some heated socks too. I bet, you know, I bet yeah. I'm every year buying socks and buying hand warmers and my so like these electric hand warmers or something new mm -hmm. i've got all the bows and stuff that i need so i'm always looking for these little gadgets you know that you know gps's yeah gps watches and stuff like that you know um but yes that is awesome those staying so the apaca socks mm -hmm. i've never tried them um i've ordered a pair just i've forwarded for me and jess and we are going to try them out yeah. We're going to go out in January and we're going to try them out. And I'm like, we're going to stay the entire time, whether we're cold or not, because that's what you do. So if they're no good, I'm going to be really pissed. If they're good, <laughs> then I'm going to be like really happy. So there's no in between. It's not be like, I did okay. Yeah. No, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be happy. <laughs> And that will probably be on the next podcast. Uh, <laughs> and well, everybody's, I love them. Everybody's going to be happy. We're going to be like, oh man, <laughs> let him be pissed because we know what he gets like when he gets pissed. I like just trash him because I don't I won't be back the next time. Though. <laughs> <laughs> you might. <laughs> so another thing that I've found, Stanley thermoses obviously recognized a problem that we have in the field. Mm -hmm. Um. They offer these flasks and I always bring a flask. It's like a victory dance for me. You know, it's like I used to have um, a flask and a cigar. Okay. If I, if I harvested a deer, it's, it's a celebration to me. Um, not only am I just getting, you know, I'm filling my freezer, I'm working for it. It's, it's you know, there's a lot of things that go into it. Uh, the why I have the farm is this family ground that was, um, in my family from, you know, back in the original, original land grants that I've bought, bought and brought back into the family. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that goes on. It's a very an emotional thing for when I take an animal on my own property on any animal. So I have this like celebration. Well, I bring a different flask. I have all types of them because I like whiskeys and I have a bunch of flasks. So I have a Stanley green flask that I've used for the last few years because it seals real well and everything. And, um, I lost it. It's mm. green. And I lost it at night. I think my mower is going to find it before I do. Oh no. So <laughs> Stanley has recognized the problem and I'm going to show it to the YouTube people. They have made the same flask in bright orange. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> and if you can't see it, it's a Stanley flask. It's eight ounces. It seals really well. It's metal stainless steel inside, but it's bright orange. So obviously I'm not the only imbecile that goes out there and drops his flask and loses it. <laughs> I mean, how important does it be? You got to have your flask. I will bring my rose gold wool now. You know, I got one that's rose gold plated to its uh, stainless steel. It says Chicago archery on it. Uh, I won't bring that one out because I know I'll lose that some bitch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but that's sacrilegious losing those. Come on. I know it's horrible. It's, it's, somebody's going to walk in when I'm at somebody, if somebody's walking on my property, and they find my flask, they better hope they're not on camera because I'll kill them. <laughs> First of all, being on my property. Second of all, taking my damn flask. But, I, you know, I lost it walking in after I killed a deer. It was on the ATV or something. I don't drink and drive my ATV. I drink and drive my ATV. <laughs> it's not my car. It's a, a couple hundred yards. But anyways, I'm going to catch so much hell for this. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyways, I just wanted everybody to know that they've now made a bright orange flask. So, and you only drink that after you get out of the stand. Believe me, you do not want to try to drink and then get out of the stand. Not that I would know, but I, I hear it's very horrible to try to do that at a climate stand. <laughs> I would not know. I would not know either. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we've pretty much covered everything. We've been on this thing for a pretty good time, except for, so you'll see a splice in this for those of you uh, hear it, even though the audio is going to be spliced um, because we suck or I suck. And I was going to say, speak for yourself. (laughs) (laughs) I suck because it's, it, I screwed up with the, I don't know. The web went down. I'm going to blame it on the web. I, yeah. It wasn't me. So anyways. It happens. If you had a tip mm-hmm. for a new hunter that hasn't a, hasn't a place where they can hunt, whether public or private, um, female or male, it doesn't matter. You know, a hunter's hunter. Um, any tips you would have? Yes. Go out and explore. Know your area. Um, you gotta see, you, you, you just have to, you, you gotta be out there. You gotta put the work in the time before you even go and hunt, you know, you can't just expect to be there and you know, you're going to, you're going to see action at that point. You got to really know your area, set it up and practice, practice shooting in your area because it makes a huge difference. Oh, that's good. And that's what I would have to say. Yeah. Practice from a tree stand practice, you know, right. Yeah. Just shooting at 20 yards and or 30 yards or whatever. And just hitting a bullseye is not enough. And no, 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 what, you know, trees and are pretty much your 20 yard and 30 yard scope that out, you know, and, and know just so you have an idea. Um, so when, you know, it does come time to, um, you know, drawing your bow, then you know exactly what pin you need to use. Right. Yeah. Cause that's important too. Yeah. And then it just becomes, everything else will become muscle memory. As long as you practice and practice and practice. Yeah. It puts it in your subconscious. Yep. Your conscious self can only do one thing. All your other movements are your subconscious. If you haven't been practicing enough, especially if you're new, it, it, it's not in your subconscious, like walking and breathing and swallowing. I mean, people don't realize it. If your subconscious wasn't swallowing for you, you'd be drooling all over yourself. <laughs> I tell everybody, they always say, well, what about breathing and walking? That'd be a better example. No, I think you guys can get the picture. If your subconscious didn't tell you to swallow every now, you'd be drooling all over yourself. You yeah. look like a mess. Disgusting. We all see mouth breathers, right? Those <laughs> yeah. are people that haven't practiced. Right? Yep. All right. So needless to say, I think we're going to wrap this up. What do you think? You got anything else? I don't have anything else. Let's I see. enjoyed having you, Katie. It was awesome. Thank you. I'm. We finally got it together because you were hunting or I was hunting or you had this yep. or I had that. We've been working on this. Like all my other podcasts for everybody, I try to get them out one a month if I can. I do one every week if I could get everybody together. I don't like to do them just by myself because I ramble and I don't like to ramble. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> you're laughing because that's what I do a lot. But you're good at it. So oh, man, there's an art to it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would just, everybody just remember it. If you're not enjoying our, if you enjoy archery, the good will come. It, you yeah. have to be having fun. Don't just do it to extend your season. It's not work because if you work at it too hard, you're overthinking it. You're overworking it. You know, archery is a lot of us are in bow hunting because we love archery, not in bow hunting and then do archery. You know what I mean? All right. So, we have a lot of fun with it. We do. And there's so many other aspects and so many people you can meet this. Archery brings out the best people without a doubt, the highest educated, uh, most uh, particular people in the world are archers, you know, uh, kings, queens, you know, yeah, pulpers like myself. You just, everybody's an archery. Um, other than that, uh, it's Christmas as well yesterday. Everybody Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah or Boxing Day or whatever it is, because I do have friends up in Canada. Um, Boxing Day was today, I believe. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, I believe it's today after or the day after New Year's. I'm not exactly sure, but nope. that was the day after one <laughs> of the two. And my buddy up there, he's he's uh, a great supporter of Chicago Archery, um, asking for shirts right now. And 
I'm trying to get them out. Uh, anything else? No, but I do want to thank you for letting me be on the show. I oh, was man. so excited and <laughs> I got your favorite bourbon and you have my favorite bourbon. So you know, Katie's a bourbon drinker like me. So we have a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. We're actually going to be spending New Year's Eve together. Yes. All of us. And uh, we're going to have a good time. Uh, I'm going to be pouring some more here in a minute. I'm going for the bottle already. Um, I just want everybody to remember C A T O P O I N T T C A T O I two T H E P point C A to the point C A to the point <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens at the end of the show. <laughs> uh, C A to the point. Uh, at gmail.com. You can reach me there. Uh, I love answering the questions. You guys send me questions and um, I will get to some. I might actually make a podcast on all the questions that I get. Um, particular questions, I ask you to come into the shop because a lot of you guys are local. If you're not local, I help you out through email. Um, anything else with that? Uh, I want you guys to look at the Chicago Archeries to the Point um, on YouTube. Chicago Archery on YouTube will be doing some new product stuff. The new bows are out by every way. Every way. Uh, I got the four major brands here. Um, Elite, Matthews, Hoyt, and Bowtech. The new bows are out. We've got samples. Come in and check them out, or demos, I should say. Um, try your new bows. If you have any questions, what makes one better than another, send it out, man. Maybe we'll make a podcast about that. I'm always looking for ideas. So I'm going to sign off for me and Katie. Katie, yes. thank you again. It was freaking awesome. And for everybody out there, see ya. Have a good night. <laughs> yeah. All right. How do we stop it? Stop recording.